some analysis from Emma Tuck, who is the head of emergencies for UNICEF operations in South Sudan. She joins me now from Juba. Emma, good to have you on the show. All right, I'm going to start by asking or giving you some stats, which you already know. Uh, Russia and Ukraine export more than a quarter of the world's wheat. Russia is the top exporter of fertilizer. Uh, the fact is that this directly affects poorer agricultural depend uh, dependent societies like uh, many across South Sudan. Uh, what is the situation there like as a result of the conflict in Ukraine? I mean, the fact is in South Sudan already prior to the conflict in Ukraine, more than 8.9 million people were in need of humanitarian assistance. Um, so the needs were already huge, and we'd already seen a significant increase in food insecurity and increasing in nutrition in children. Now, South Sudan being in its nature of continuing protracted conflict, um, severe shocks like floods, is extremely vulnerable to these global shocks, such as the, the war in Ukraine. So what we've seen is a rise in global prices, and this is specifically affecting Plumpina, um, which you've just spoken to, a 16% increase. Um, so our ability to purchase this and bring it in country is now massively reducing. Just to put that in some figures, already this year, we expected 1.4 million children to need treatment for acute malnutrition. Um, now, with this rise, uh, we're expecting to see a break in our pipeline in the next three months, unless we get funding needed urgently. On top of that, we've also seen an increase in the cases that we projected. So 30 percent increase compared to last year of children who are coming into the treatment centers with acute malnutrition. I mean, you're, you're, it seems to me like you're being hit uh, from, from both sides. I mean, it's clear that the humanitarian needs are, 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 are going up. They're at a record high. Uh, you say the purchasing power is increasing, and this is as, as a direct result of the available funding. That is at an all-time low. How is it going to work out? Well, absolutely. I mean, you know, talking, talking across all of our donor partners, even before the war in Ukraine, we saw significant cuts in humanitarian funding. So there is a huge effort from the humanitarian community here and globally to try and support global advocacy, raising attention on places like Su South Sudan and the needs of the people here. Um, we, what we see now without this funding is actually already there are facilities that may have to close. Um, there are staff that may have to may lose their jobs. And these are essential frontline staff who are working, providing this severe treatment. So really, these advocacy efforts that we could do nationally, regionally, and globally, to really try and draw attention to such crises is essential. Emma Tuck, thank you very much for joining us here on the News Hour. I do appreciate your time and the analysis.